All right, welcome back everybody. We are in the progressive era still. We are looking at suffrage and temperance movements. Two words that hopefully you know what they mean by now. If you don't remember, suffrage is the right to vote. So the 15th Amendment, that was African American men getting the right to vote after the Civil War. Temperance, think temper. Look at the word right there. Okay, and <clears throat> that's talking about alcohol and maybe how you ever seen somebody if they've had too much alcohol hopefully only in movies so during the progressive era there were many efforts to change the laws of the United States progressive progress trying to fix things okay there's a problem is there a solution something we still debate today women's suffrage see them there Votes for us when we are women, okay? Women looking for the right to vote. The suffrage movement helped women gain equal rights. You can see here, this is one of the parades happening um, down in D.C. You can see the Capitol building right there. So how did it help them do that? In the 1800s, women's opportunities and rights did not equal men's. Okay, they didn't have the right to vote. They also, there was a lot of other power that they didn't have. Voters first, women nowhere, social reform. Look, he's putting his arm in front of her. What is going on with these voters, with these candidates? What are they doing? Colleges were closed to women but they wanted to increase their educational opportunities. Think about it. You could be the most intelligent person in your class, in your school. But the idea, oh, you're just a woman. You don't need to go to college. No, no, because your job was to stay at home, have babies, take care of the house. Now, is that wrong for somebody to do? Absolutely not, okay? But should you have the opportunity to do more than that? What do you think? Many women wanted to get involved in the reform movements of the day, which included abolition, banning slavery, and temperance, banning alcohol. Okay, if you really get into the study of women's suffrage, you're going to find that women were getting involved originally before the Civil War in the abolitionist or banning slavery movement. But they found even within that movement, within that progressive movement, they weren't allowed to be up front. Oftentimes they weren't allowed to be the ones speaking. They weren't allowed to sit down on the floor with all the other people. They had to be tucked away into a corner, starting to get upset at even in this progressive movement, that they are being held back. The temperance movement was an attempt to stop the abuse of alcohol. Again, if a woman's supposed to stay at home, the men's supposed, supposed to be out working, right? Well, if they're stopping in at this bar, drinking up all their wages, are they bringing it home? Are the wives, are the kids being taken care of? How are some people, after they've had too much alcohol, are they a nice person to be around? Some people really not. It can be dangerous. So in 1848, women's rights leader Elizabeth Cady Stanton met with men and women at the Seneca Falls Convention in Seneca Falls, New York, to discuss women's rights. This is Elizabeth Cady Stanton. She's a favorite of mine because where I grew up, um, my lake cabin, Johnstown, New York. That's where she's from. That's where she grew up with her father as a judge. And she understood that even though she was probably more intelligent than her brother, she wasn't going to be able to go to a regular college because, well, she's just a girl. She'd also see men that were drunks and maybe beat their wives and children. But if there was a divorce, who got the children? The men, always. It wasn't even a question. If the man wanted it, the men owned the children. These were things that she was not happy with. Okay, Issues at the convention included education and jobs, but the most controversial issue was whether women should be able to vote. 
Abolitionist Frederick Douglass supported women's suffrage. He was one of the few men at the Seneca Falls Convention. After the Civil War, the 15th Amendment was passed, which gave newly freed African American men the right to vote. It gave them suffrage. Women were not included. How do you think people like Elizabeth Cady Stanton felt about that? Suffrage. And see here, make sure you understand what that word is. When you hear suffrage, you're thinking votes. It's the right to vote. Susan B. Anthony also fought for women's rights and suffrage, the right to vote. She didn't even go ahead and get arrested for voting when she wasn't allowed. It was illegal. Women could not vote. Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony worked together to help women get the right to vote. This is in front of the White House. These are some of the women that are going to be arrested and sent down to the workplace at the Aquapon, the prison there. Some of the things. Danger. Women's suffrage would double the irresponsible vote. Women weren't considered responsible. They're too emotional. It is a menace to the home, men's employment, and to all business. Well, Men are supposed to be in charge, right? If women can vote, are they going to be in charge? Everybody's going to lose their place. Chaos! It will just, it will be horrible. These were the things that were said. I remember one time um, reading in the newspaper, they um, polled a bunch of the college presidents. And it was amazing to see presidents of big universities argue against women having the right to vote, talking about what a danger it was. So here the headquarters oppose, so they're against women's suffrage. What do you think, what are they fearing? More people out here protesting. Just the simple fact, just like today, some people want to criticize anybody that protests. This is unladylike, what are they doing out there? This is a disgrace that they are out there protesting this. By 1912, many states had approved a women's right to vote, mainly out west because they needed to have a certain amount of voters first to be accepted as a state, to be brought into the United States. So oftentimes women got the right to vote out west quicker than they did in the old east coast, the original states, though you see New York State in 1917. World War I helped strengthen the cause for women's suffrage. With men at war, women had to do jobs. They had to come out of the house to do jobs that men typically did, such as repairing automobiles, driving buses. Women also worked in factories producing weapons. By, in 1919, Congress passed the 19th Amendment. What amendment? 19th. What did the 19th say? That... Women are going to get the right to vote. Okay? They look happy there. Suffrages to celebrate here today. That's what women who were campaigning for the right to vote were known as. All right? Now you're going to flip page. You've got. This video goes to a second page, changes brought on by the women's suffrage movement. You should be able to do this even without the video, but women realized increased or more educational opportunities. Women attained voting rights with the passage of the 19th Amendment. Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton worked for women's suffrage or right to vote. So the stuff really on this page, you need to make sure that you know that. As soon as you see this, you can answer those questions about education, about the 19th Amendment, about Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. That's what you're going to need to know from this section. Okay? If you have trouble remembering those things, I recommend flashcards. In some of our classes, we will be making those up.